In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to layer parenting in Adobe Animate. We're gonna start by setting up and applying layer parenting to a very simple project. Then we're gonna do the same thing for a much more complex project, ending with me showing you how to animate this one into a little dance. Now, before we get started, we should probably go over what layer parenting is first. So basically what it is is a controlled system for all of your layers. So if we look here, pelvis is the main controller right here, and it has branches that come off to torso and down here to left thigh. So that means that pelvis is a parent to the torso and the left thigh and exhibits some control over them. So if I scroll this down, and if I go to pelvis right here that I'm selected on, and I move or rotate it, then anything that is a child of the pelvis will also move or rotate with it. And anything that is not a child of the pelvis, like these ones over here, will not move or rotate with it. So if we look down here, that means that anything that is connected directly to pelvis or beyond. So torso is connected to pelvis. It's a child of pelvis, but torso has its own children down here, which is the left upper arm, left lower arm, and left hand, which is these ones over here. That's why they moved with it. But if we look at the very top here, right upper arm, right lower arm, and right hand are not part of the parenting system. Therefore, they did not move or rotate when I rotated and moved pelvis. All right, so some of the key things you need to do to set up your project for layer parenting is obviously name your layers. You're probably gonna end up like this one. You might end up with a whole bunch of layers. So you wanna make sure that you are naming them so you know what you're dealing with. So this one for me is gonna be the weight. This one here, layer three, is gonna be the bicep. And this one right here is gonna be the forearm. The next thing you have to deal with is the order of your layers here. So remember whatever's at the top, that's the most in the foreground and whatever's at the bottom is most to the background. So in this case, I wanna make sure that the weight is above the two arm pieces. So it's the furthest out front. And usually I make sure that the forearm, like the anything that's the most like away from the body would be on top. So my forearm above my bicep. Then we have to turn them all into symbols. Cause right now if I click on the weight, and let's say I click, uh, actually, let's just click back on it. If I click here, I can move this piece out. I don't want that. I wanna convert it into a symbol. So I'm gonna click on the bicep first, go up to modify and convert to symbol or F8. And I'm gonna call this one bicep again. And I'm gonna make sure it's a graphic symbol right here instead of any of these other ones, just graphic and click okay. You're gonna see that it turns into this box right here all the way around it. The next is gonna be forearm, go do the same thing, modify, convert to symbol, and I'm gonna call it the same, four, and then the weight, modify, convert to symbol, and weight. And then the last thing we have to do to set up for layer parenting is to move our rotation points. So you have to make sure that you are on your free transform tool, so this one right here, so click Q or click on that button right there. And then we have to move the rotation point to where it makes sense. So for this one, it actually makes sense for it to be in the middle of the weight because the hand behind it is actually holding it probably in the middle. So that's actually where it would be connected in this case. For the forearm though, you can see that this dot should actually be rotating around the elbow. So it'd be down here somewhere. So that now when I rotate this one, it's gonna rotate around the elbow like that. And then I'll just click down on bicep and move its rotation point over to the shoulder because there would be a body over here and we want it to rotate like this as well. Okay, so now that we have all of our rotation points set, we are now ready to apply the layer parenting to this simple animation. You can see that I already have it clicked right here. So yours might look like this. To access layer parenting, it's just this little tree, like family tree looking thing here. So click on that. It's gonna open up this slightly different gray kind of zone. And then all we're doing is creating a path of connections. So we wanna start, you always wanna start with your most kind of base object. So in my case, it's the bicep. And then you want to move outwards from that main base thing. So my next one is the forearm here. So I want 
this, the forearm, is going to be the child of the bicep, which is the parent. So all we have to do is click in this zone and drag forearm to the bicep, and it'll create this little tree saying bicep is kind of in control of the forearm. And then in this case, we just go to weight and do the same thing, but weight is the child of the forearm. So I'm going to click there and drag this one to forearm. You can see it makes another branch. So the bicep is the parent of the forearm. The forearm is the parent of the weight. And now if we go to bicep and rotate it, so we go here, it's going to rotate with the other two things. If I went to forearm and rotated forearm, you can see that it's just going to control the weight. So now if we want to do a quick animation with this, I'm just going to highlight these three keyframes, right click and create a classic tween. I'm going to just keep it at one second. Um, I'll right click and insert keyframes there. And maybe I'll put a couple more keyframes right here. So I just highlighted, right clicked and then insert keyframe. At this point right here, I'm going to start with the base. I'm going to rotate this down and go to about there. I'm going to go to this one. And when the weight's coming down, it's going to kind of release like that. If I was going to do something for the weight, if there was some like design or something on here, I could like rotate it, but it doesn't really matter. It's not, you're not going to really see it. Okay. And then I'm going to go to these keyframes and the person lifted them back up. But again, I'm going to start here and I'm going to have him not really lift his arm very much like the bicep. It's going to be more the curl part right here. He's going to curl that up and then maybe I'll just kind of rotate that a bit. Okay. So that would look like this. He brings it down and he's going to curl it back up. Okay. So that's it for this simple animation. Let's jump over to our other one here. So this is the dancing girl. And as you can see, I've already named all the layers. I've ordered all the layers. I've turned them all into symbols and I've adjusted their rotation points. So I'm all set and ready to animate. The only things you'll notice here is let's say, let's go to the you know upper arm. There's at the shoulder. If we look at the foot, it's at the ankle. So you really want to target like ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, elbow, uh, wrist, all the pivot points should be at those spots. So I'm actually going to make the main thing, the pelvis. Okay. So I'm going to start from there and then work my way out. So from the pelvis, I'm going to parent the upper leg, like so the thigh and the thigh first. So I have to find those here. So right thigh, I'm going to drag to pelvis and then I'm going to find left thigh. So left thigh right here, I'm also going to drag to pelvis. I'm just going to shrink this a little bit so we can see more layers here. Okay. So those are there. And then plus torso has to be linked to pelvis as well. So if you see our first layer here is pelvis to torso, pelvis to right thigh, and then pelvis to left thigh. The next thing I need to do is just build out the rest of the legs. So from left thigh, I got left leg is going to be the child of left thigh, and then left foot is going to be the child of left leg. So I drag those ones. So this is one leg right here. And then if I go up, here's the next one. So right thigh right here. So right leg is the child of right thigh. And then right foot is the child of right leg. So here's the other path for the other leg. So we got one leg, two legs. Okay. And then the rest is going to be built from the torso. So at the torso, we have, we have to find like upper arm right and upper arm left. So I got left upper arm here. I have to drag that one to the torso. And then I have right upper arm right there. That one also goes to the torso. So you can see that the torso is now building out here and building out there. Okay, so let's build out the rest of this. Oh, also from torso, so is the head, right? The head also is on there. So if I click on it, you can see that my pivot points are at the neck. So head is dragged to torso as well. So there's another piece, but then that ends that one. That path is done. There's nothing else. I could have done like the hair up here. You might have like your eyes and mouth and stuff, but I just left it as one head for now. Okay, let's go up to right upper arm here. So obviously I have right lower arm should attach to that one. And then right hand is going to be attached to that one. In this case, I'm going to, I forgot, I guess I have to move left hand and lower arm. I'm going to move those down. So that they're with left upper arm and we can, they're just closer to each other. So I can drag left lower arm to left upper arm and then left hand to 
left lower arm. On a side note, if you ever wanna remove a child from a parent, I know that sounds weird, then just left click in the parent zone here. So I'm gonna left click, you're gonna see this menu and then just click on remove parent. So I'm gonna click on remove parent. It's gonna remove it from here and put it back to where it was at the start. I'm just gonna reconnect them for now. And you can also change the parents. So if I left click again and go into change parent, you can pick anything from the list here, or you can just click and drag. So if I want to reparent to head instead, I just drag it down there and you can see that it'll reparent right away. So I'm just gonna, again, put it back to where it was. All right, so now that we have all of our parenting set up, I'm just gonna drop this down. Let's take a look at what we have created. So I'm gonna make sure I'm on my free transform tool and I'm just gonna click on pelvis. Now see, anytime I rotate pelvis, the entire thing is going to rotate because that's the main parent or like let's say the grandparent. If I click on the torso and try and rotate it, it's only gonna rotate everything that is beyond the path of torso. So if I drop this back up or move this back up, you can see that it's not gonna move anything that's in the green going back to pelvis. Anything that's attached to pelvis this way, it's not gonna move, which is the two legs and the pelvis but it's gonna move everything else that's after in orange and beyond on our path here. But if I take this and I move this one, you're gonna see it's also going to separate. So you have to make sure, I'm just gonna undo that. You have to make sure if you're gonna move the entire thing, you're also clicked on pelvis. So if you move pelvis, everything moves with it. Okay, so let's just take a look. If I click on the upper arm here and rotate, everything beyond it is gonna rotate. Let's just take a look at the leg here. It's just gonna be the bottom half of like the shin and the foot, and then any extremity, let's say this hand, it's just gonna be the hand because that's at the end of a path. So anything at the end of the path, nothing else depends on it, so it just rotates on its own. Similar to the head here, it's on its own thing and nothing else depends on it, so it rotates or moves by itself, right? So undo, put that back. Okay, so now let's just set up a quick dancing animation. So I'm gonna expand this out so I can see all my layers. I'm gonna click on the top one and hold and then drag all the way down to left thigh right here, right click and then click on create classic tween. That's gonna put that to exactly one second. For boombox and shadow down here, I'm not gonna move them in my example project. I did in my sample one at the start, but I'm just gonna click here, hold, drag down again, right click, and just insert keyframes. So that's just gonna hold those ones the whole time for this full one second. Okay, so if I go back to the start and then I just crunch this down for now, you can see that's my starting position. And when I'm hovered over with this blue thing over these keyframes, that's when I have control over any of them by just clicking, as long as I'm on free transform. If I click on them, you can see that the blue thing here changes for everything that I click on. It's gonna jump over to that thing which means I'm controlling that keyframe right there. And essentially I'm controlling every keyframe of these other ones that are along the path that are beyond it, that are beyond its spot along the path. So if I were to maneuver right upper arm, it's gonna also impact the keyframes of these two because they're parented to upper arm. Okay, so then I'm just gonna go to, I'll expand this out again. I'm just gonna go to five seconds and put a bunch of keyframes in there. So I can highlight everything, right click and go insert keyframe. Then I'm gonna expand this back and I'm just gonna play around with a couple different things, okay? So let's just, if this is her starting position, right? This was the starting position right here. So if I move this blue thing to line up with these keyframes, I'm gonna move kind of everything just opposite. So I'm gonna click on upper arm here and rotate this one up and then maybe just have not have the forearm so like perfect. I'll just move a little bit. Maybe I'll rotate this one. Whoa, be careful there. I just skewed it out. So make sure you're rotating. So to there, and maybe the hand will just kind of point a little bit there. I'll also click on torso and just have it rotate a little bit like that. And then I'll switch these legs. So this leg will drop down and I'll rotate the bottom half of the leg just out a little bit. And then this one will rotate up and maybe even do kind of a, a full like kicking motion. And I'll have like this toe like kind of point. So if we go from these two, we already have that like dancing motion back and forth. Oh, and just so you know, if you rotate something and it looks 
odd or out of place, like there's this little gap here now, you can just click back on your object and then use your arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge it into place until it looks good. And then obviously you just keep adding and manipulating keyframes until your animation is complete. So here's the one that we just created right now. I just did a really quick version here of dancing and jumping. But if we go back over to my original practice one, you're gonna see that I made this one a little bit longer and I made much more unique movements. I have the boom box bouncing around. You can see that this is the layer. I did you know, more frequent keyframes on the boom box layer. So it bounced around a little bit quicker. And then you can see that my movements of like the torso and the, you know, the pelvis and stuff, I moved it around a little bit more. It wasn't just, the pelvis wasn't just stuck in place and everything else was moving. I also moved the pelvis and the body, you know, and the head and stuff around a lot more. Okay, so a lot more unique movements as going here. And then the last movement here, I had her like crouch down and then jump up into the air at the end. So let's just watch this one one more time dancing around and then squats down and jumps into the air. And that's it. That's a quick breakdown of layer parenting in Adobe Animate. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.